beer review. Today we've got another beer from Rana, which again was kindly sent over by Stephanie and Alois. Been really enjoying these beers so far. A big, big thank you to both Stephanie and Alois for being so kind and generous and sending these beers over. Today's beer is the Lilybuck, which is clocking in at 6.5%. Now this is a Weizenbock, and I believe this is a bronze medal winning beer from the Beer World Cup from 2012. And the beer is named after their daughter. So what, what a nice gesture. And uh, yeah, I've already tried this beer, tried it at the tasting event, and I've already had the other bottle that they sent me, and uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed it, so it's about time that I actually get it properly analysed. Without any further ado, let's get the beer open and poured. So before I actually show you what the beer looks like, which actually is a good thing because I poured it with an extremely large head, um, I'd better show you what the actual bottle looks like properly. And uh, yeah, really nice and simple. It's got, again, uh, when I first talked about Rana, I was talking about the logo and it reminded me of like American typography. There's something very Americana about the look of this beer to me. Uh, maybe it's the colour scheme, it kind of reminds me of like an American diner. I mean, of course, you have got um, a lovely German woman on the front. Not too sure if that is the Lily who this beer is named after. Really nice looking beer. Uh, definitely one that would get your attention. Got a nice label on the neck and of course we've got the very streamlined label on the back and uh, yeah looks really really nice so uh, what does the beer actually look like well this is what it looks like in the glass nice and hazy it's got a nice deep orange sort of color to it kind of reminds me of a pale ale but of course, you've got a really nice foamy, creamy looking head, off-white with some really compact bubbles. And uh, yeah, just a really, really nice looking beer. So I will sniff it before I top it up. And uh, yeah, let's so here we go. Good English is good English. It smells like candy floss. It's got like that sweetness to it. Picking up slight hints of caramel. I'm detecting hops in there. I'm not too sure what hops they use or how they distribute the hops in this beer, but it's relatively hoppy. You are, of course, picking up those like earthy straw tones in there as well. Very slightly seasoned as well on the back. But yeah, those like caramel, toffee, fruity tones are really up front. And of course you're getting like ever so slight hints of banana in there as well. And uh, yeah, it's uh, a lot paler than you would expect for a bock. So it smells nice. It looks really nice. Let's give it a taste. Cheers. I know some people don't like it when they've got a big head on their beer. But it's really nice because it's really nice and creamy. And then you get the beer coming in through. So it's a really pleasurable mouthfeel. It's really nicely carbonated, which takes a little bit of weight off the body, which it is a full bodied beer. But that carbonation just eases it along at a really nice pace. There's a nice bitterness on the back end, which isn't too intrusive and it doesn't linger too long. I mean, it stays, but it's not where you're like, oh, what's that taste in my mouth? It's nothing like that. But the actual beer itself, I could be completely wrong, but I'm guessing this style of bitterness that I'm experiencing is coming from the hops. And I don't know if this is a really hoppy beer or if it was just more aroma hops. But I am getting ever, ever so slightly like tropical fruits in the background. Nowhere near as the level as you'd get in like an IPA or a pale ale. But they're definitely there and then they just ease into a really nice bitterness. And it's really a nice and warming beer on the finish. Even though 
it's relatively fruity, hoppy, hoppy and light in flavour. I'm getting like a ever so slightly burnt caramel, as if you've got caramelised nuts, where you're getting an ever so slight bitter smokiness, but it doesn't override the dense sweetness. It's got a very slight bready flavour to it, which is to be expected from the style. And being that it's a vice bock, those malts, they are playing a really nice part, but they're actually a little bit toned down, so they're not intrusive or dominating. But they've got a really nice body to them. And uh, yeah, it's really hard to pinpoint exactly what I'm picking up with this beer. But all I'm saying is, and even though it's a, it's a vice beer and it's 6.5%, uh, it's going down really really easily and ex except for some little warmth on the back you would not think that this is a 6.5 beer and you could probably do a little bit of damage if you're really into your vice beers but yeah look at that look how nice and creamy that is it's a really lovely lovely looking beer it's bready it's yeasty it's nicely malted and uh yeah it's just a very very pleasant very drinkable vice bock and uh yeah i'm just really really enjoying it i know i've not really said too much about the actual beer and what i'm picking up but if you like your vice beers this is definitely definitely one that you guys would really really enjoy <laughs> and i'd actually like to see what beers got the silver and gold medals because this is a very very high quality beer indeed really nice and tasty Nice and drinkable. It's heavy, but it's not uncomfortable. It's not exactly the most robust beer, but it is really nice and flavourful. And uh, yeah, it's just a really good all-round culmination of a Bock and a Bice beer. Damn, damn good beer. Aside from maybe it could be a little bit more flavoursome, I would have really liked to have seen, potentially, um, if they could have done something more of the hops in this beer. But then again, you'd, it'd be a completely different style of beer in general. Yeah, it'd be like uh, the Hopfenweiser from Schneiderweiser, which is a great little beer, but that's a completely different style to like a Weizenbock, I suppose. So, but yeah, I don't even know if they uh, the, they intended the hops to be as dominant, but I'm just really picking up on them from the, the haze, the smell, and also very slightly hoppy on the taste. So I'm going to give it... A 9 out of 10. Um, I'm really, really enjoying this one. And uh, we're going to have, when Jeannie comes home, pasta and pesto. I think that's going to complement it really, really nicely. Uh, not that I'll know, because by the time she's home, I'll have finished this already. One of the nicest ones that have been sent by Rana. And yeah, like I was saying, they've sent some really great beers. So guys, thank you very, very much for watching this beer review. Um, if you want to find out more about this beer and if it, you know, I've got my facts right about it, then I'll be putting some information down below as well as, as, well as any other potential video reviews here on YouTube. Uh, once again, check out the Rana Brewery and all the previous Rana related beer reviews that I've done. Really great brewery. Um, I'm not just saying that because I've been sent stuff. I'm saying that because every beer that I've tried for them, even though I've liked some better than others, I've enjoyed and happily drank. And this is one that's really up there with the best of them. So Stephanie and Alois, very, very thank you. Very, very thank you. So Stephanie and Alois, Herzlich and dank uh, for the beer. And what a great tribute to your daughter. Um, if I had a beer like that named after me, I'd be a very, very happy chappy indeed. So guys, thank you very much for watching. I'm waffling again, and I shall see you in the next beer review. Cheers.